when I first received the invitation to attend SIG's unveiling of the new P322, I had fairly low expectations. Not because SIG doesn't make a great gun, they do, but in my experience, the majority of 22 handguns either feel cheap or are wildly unreliable. But what's incredible is the 322 is neither of these things. In fact, I think it may in fact have just set the new gold standard for semi-automatic 22 pistols. So why is that? Well, we take a closer look at the P322, find out. Despite its appearance, the new SIG P322 is a single action only, semi-automatic, magazine-fed handgun chambered in 22 long rifle. At first glance, you'd be forgiven for assuming the little pistol's magazine capacity was limited to something like, well, 10 rounds. And what's incredible is that the new SIG actually features a brand new proprietary polymer 20 round magazine with optional 25 round extended versions available right now. The SIG slide is made from anodized aluminum and the method of operation for the 322 is a simple direct blowback which is true for basically every rimfire handgun on the market today. But what's unique about the design is that despite being a hammer-fired, single-action-only pistol, the 322 looks like a striker-fired gun. That's because the hammer is actually shrouded slash internalized at the rear of the slide. Now, because the gun is blowback operated, it features a fixed four-inch barrel that comes from the factory with an obfuscated threaded muzzle, not totally unlike the one found on the GSG-1911. For the uninitiated, this means that the threaded portion of the barrel is covered with a smooth nut that resides underneath the slide itself. That way, the gun still retains a more classic look by not featuring a protruding threaded barrel. This nut can be removed and replaced with an included half by 28 thread adapter, allowing installation of a shooter's favorite sound suppressor. Like this innovative arm slingshot TI provided by Silencer Shop. On the other end of the barrel, the chamber incorporates fluting just like H&K uses on their G3 rifles and MP5 submachine guns. And while many shooters bemoan this on centerfire guns as it tends to beat up brass in exchange for a more reliable operation, this is a non-issue for rimfire ammo because nobody in their right mind would ever reload it. Since the gun is single action only, it features a frame safety similar in function and placement to those found on a 1911. Unlike the 1911, the 322's controls are fully ambidextrous. This includes both the serrated triangular magazine release button as well as the slide release and the safety. All three of these appear to be made of stamped steel with a semi-gloss black finish, while the trigger is more matte finish, giving a little bit better tactile control. Another great user-friendly feature is the P322's inclusion of two different interchangeable triggers. This includes a more performance-style flat face trigger favored by top shooters, as well as a more traditional curved one. I imagine most shooters will opt for the flat face, but as someone who learned to shoot handguns on a Massachusetts-compliant 10-pound triggers, I find that the curved trigger gives better leverage and faster shots, though shooters really aren't going to need that extra leverage since the 322's trigger breaks around 4 to 6 pounds. The frame also lends itself to fast shooting, with a grip that, at least in terms of thickness, feels somewhere between a P320 and a P365XL, meaning that shooters of virtually all shapes and sizes will find the grip pretty comfortable, especially with its low bore axis combined with the trigger undercut and a high back strap. Really, the gun just melds into the shooter's hand and really feels like a natural extension of your body. Additionally, the frame features molded stippling on all sides with frames of smooth polymer to accent them. This pattern offers omnidirectional traction without being so coarse that it would destroy holsters or a shooter's hands. But let's get to one of my favorite aspects of the gun, the magazine. Although somewhat simplistic in appearance, these magazines actually stagger the rounds as they're loaded, allowing a shooter to put 20 rounds of ammunition in a flush fitting magazine, which is truly remarkable. What's even more remarkable is the fact that this has no apparent effect on reliability whatsoever but more on that in a moment. These magazines feature a follower with a loading assist tool built into them, allowing shooters to take some of the tension off the follower to more easily load the magazine. One last note about these magazines is that the P322 includes two in the box and additional 25 round or 20 round magazines that will be available either now or very soon for between 30 and $40, depending on the retailer. All right, solid ergonomics and capacious magazine, perfect. But what about sights? I can't hit anything if I can't see it, fair enough. Well, the sights on the P322 are very similar to a combat style handgun, kind of mixed with a older style competition gun in that it's a set of post and notch green fiber optic sights, the front of which is totally fixed, but the rear can be adjusted for both windage and elevation. What's interesting is that windage and elevation adjustments on the rear sight are swapped from their traditional locations. So elevation is actually on the side while windage is on top. 
it, kind of odd, but it's labeled and easy enough to get used to. Now for shooters who want something a little more modern or a little bit quicker shooting, you can remove this rear sight assembly and replace it with any micro red dot designed to utilize the footprint of a Romeo 1 or a Shield RMSC reflex sight. Most shooters will take this for granted, but it's actually pretty incredible because 22 does not really operate at very high pressure levels and tends to have a fairly weak recoil impulse. So the addition of extra weight on the slide, a portion of the gun that has to traverse back and forth, could very easily affect the reliability of a handgun. But in this instance, it doesn't at all. The engineers at SIG definitely designed this gun to be run with a red dot. And in my personal testing, it doesn't just run with the lightweight Palmer Romeo 1, but it also functioned flawlessly with both the traditional aluminum shield sight as well as their new Shield RMS X, which is an extra wide version that weighs a little bit more than the original. And that fact alone tells you exactly what SIG had in mind when they designed the P322, a range plinker that can serve double duty as a competition handgun. And that's an aspect of the design I can personally attest to as I had a tremendous amount of fun and success shooting a rimfire steel challenge in Orlando, Florida with a bunch of SIG's top shooters. None of which did I come close to beating, but I still had some pretty respectable times. And after putting a couple hundred rounds through that gun in that setting, I can tell you that at every distance we attempted, the little gun was able to rapidly and accurately land shots on steel targets, provided that a shooter did their part. All right, so the 322 has good sights, the ergonomics are great, the magazine holds plenty of rounds, but what about performance? I mean, the biggest crutch for the majority of rimfire handguns is the fact that they don't run very well. Well, in my somewhat limited time with the P322, I personally fired around 700 rounds of CCI standard velocity ammo through the gun as it shipped from the factory. I also fired an additional 250 rounds through the gun with a SIG 22 suppressor attached. And in both instances, neither gun encountered a failure to eject or failure to feed. In fact, the only issue encountered the entire day across dozens of pistols firing thousands of rounds was a handful of failures to detonate. And with every one of these that I actually personally witnessed, they were due to the primer either being non-existent or unevenly spread across the rim. And this is really, truly remarkable in the most genuine sense of the word. Let me reiterate. I fired an auto-loading rimfire handgun 700 times without a mechanical malfunction with no cleaning either in between or prior to shooting. If that doesn't make you immediately sit up in your chair and either call me a liar or make you want to buy one of these guns, nothing will. As someone who has owned their fair share of 22 pistols, I can tell you from exhaustive experience that most suffer a stovepipe within 50 rounds consistently. In fact, prior to this event, I had never seen a rimfire pistol capable of flawless operation beyond 200 rounds. So is the new P322 from SIG worth a buy? Well, in one hyphenated word, abso freaking lootly. Yes, it is a phenomenal handgun that bucks all the trends of having cheapy, unreliable handguns chambered a 22 long rifle. It looks, feels, and shoots like a serious handgun. And what's remarkable even more so is that the map price on it, or the lowest advertisable price by resellers, is a staggeringly low $399, which suggests that SIG is utilizing the P322 as a market disruptor by undercutting the competition with a superior product. So if you've ever wanted a 22 handgun to either compete with, plink with, or simply even hunt small game with, you really can't pick a better pistol than the new SIG P322, unless you want something that's a revolver, and even then, that's a matter of taste. Thanks guys. For Ammo Land TV, I'm Jim Grant. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos, and as always, I will catch you guys on the flip side.